going back to your past, you were the or one of the uh, the first Canadian to win a Grand Slam, right? 2019 U.S. Open, beating Serena Williams as well. Give us a little of that experience and what that meant to you. Well, I mean, it meant everything to me, winning a Grand Slam. I've dreamt of that um, for a pretty long time. And then winning it um, was just incredible. I remember laying down on that floor because I know in my short career, I did go through a lot. But when I was laying down on that floor, I thought that all the downs that, you know, I experienced, injuries, this and that, were all worth it just for that moment. And I hope to continue to win more, including this tournament. Um, talking about winning, uh, you had a very promising, uh, successful junior career. Junior career to obviously Grand Slam champion. Tell us about the process, and you know, we have a lot of kids out here and youth that are dreaming to be um, like you. So, what is that kind of process like, and what kind of what could you tell them? Uh, I can say a lot um, on that subject, but I'm going to keep it short. I feel that. Um, for me, the development at a very young age was super important. I um, was very fortunate enough to have the help of Tennis Canada. So, you know, I was doing fitness from a very young age. I was traveling the world alone from a very young age. Um, but it wasn't easy, you know. I was missing, you know, birthday parties or I'd miss hanging out with my friends and doing like, you know, the normal kid stuff. But I had a dream, I had a purpose um, from the age of 13. I just truly loved this sport. I wanted to do big things in it and I kind of just, you know, had that set and every day waking up I had a picture of me, you know, holding up every Grand Slam title so I manifested it from a very young age and um, there were obviously some doubters, you know, I'd go to school, I'd carry my tennis bag, people would make fun of me, you know, even being a girl. They're like, oh, you can't play a sport and stuff like that. And that really brought me down at one point. But um, my mom, she always told me not to, you know, pay too much attention to people like that. And um, yeah, I guess my advice is don't pay attention to people like that and just go after your dreams as much as you can and surround yourself with amazing people and supporting people. <laughs> Funniest travel story you've had. Well, the first one that pops into my head is when I won the U.S. Open, I was giving autographs at the end of the match, and there was one guy that said, you won me $55,000 for winning this match. And I was like, okay. I thought that was pretty funny. The most important thing is being able to talk to that person off the court. Obviously, on the court is super important too, but if I don't have a connection with them off the court, um, it's super hard for me to deal with because I mean I see them well I see my team more than I see anyone else um, I want them to be obviously kind and compassionate and communication for me is very important so if there's honest communication all the time um, if he sees me doing something that he doesn't like or he thinks I can improve on I want him to tell me right away because that's just me as a person I want to improve every single day um, and I mean, now I have a, an amazing coach. He's had a great record. Um, and I can see a lot of improvement on the court. So that's obviously a bonus. I work a lot mentally off the court. I do a lot of breathing exercises, meditation, visualization. Um, again, I can talk about that all day. Uh, but the biggest thing for me is obviously doing things off the court to help me on the court. But um, when I'm on the court specifically, I just like to keep it easy. I like to just focus on my breath. If I feel like I'm thinking too much or I'm getting stressed out or I'm super negative, I just refocus on my breathing. I do box breathing is what it's called. So I inhale for four, I hold for four, exhale for four, hold for four, and then repeat as much as I can. Well, at the... U.S. Open, I kind of had a feeling of what was to come because I played her uh, two weeks before that at the Rogers Cup at home in Toronto. Um, yeah, but she retired. I mean, I mean, I, I no, I won, but uh, definitely not the way I want to win. Um, but yeah, I had a feeling of how it would be. I mean, in Toronto, I remember I was still wiping down my tears because I was like bawling my eyes out. I couldn't believe that I was playing, you know, Serena Williams, and I was still wiping down my tears walking on the court. Um, but then I had to, you know, tell myself, you know, this is a grand slam. I need to get my, you know, stuff together. 
So I, yeah, I just, I dealt with it in a better way at the US Open. And for some reason I had like tremendous confidence going into the match. I know I was an underdog, so I had nothing to lose, but I, I don't know. I just knew that I was gonna do well, whether I lost or won, I knew that I was gonna do well. I knew that I was gonna put up a fight, but yeah, it's just, it's incredible. I mean, playing one of the best of all time is, um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's nice. <laughs> And I think sportsmanship is super, super huge. Just having respect for your opponents on and off the court and not only for your opponents, but for yourself too. I think a lot of the times we talk about the other opponent, but what's super important is how you treat yourself as well. Because if you know how to treat yourself, then it'll be easier to treat other people with respect. Um, but you know, not maybe not throwing your racket or not saying bad words or like super in that other person's face. Um, can definitely show great sportsmanship, but I think it's very important. Roger Federer is like the number one example of that.